glad glad to have you join us here, uh, Mr. Kagan. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. And uh, if you could raise up that sign one more time, it does say health care for America. It doesn't say health insurance. It says health care, which is our focus. We care about the people we're listening to. We have the honor of representing. And it is about making certain that people can get to see their doctor when they need to at a price they can afford to pay. And I'll share with you some of the stories that perhaps President Obama is going to hear when he comes to Green Bay, Wisconsin on the 11th of June, just a few days from now. Here's someone from Green Bay who wrote to me. Her name is Stephanie. Quote, insurance is number one on my list. My current employer can't afford to give us health insurance, and I can't get individual coverage. Help, please. President Obama might hear from Jim, also from Green Bay. Every human should have health care, don't have insurance, 60 years old, close quote. He's between the cracks. He's not old enough for Medicare, and he's not poor enough for welfare or Medicaid. In Sturgeon Bay, just outside of Green Bay, got a card from Rhonda, quote, our middle class income cannot support the increase in medical premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. What will be done for the middle class? Close quotes. That's Rhonda in Sturgeon Bay. People are writing to their legislators, not just in the federal house here in Washington, but across the state houses. Every government at every level understands the pressure and the cost for health care has risen astronomically. It is 17% of our GDP. It is that investment that we make in ourselves to guarantee that we have health. If you don't have your health, you may not have anything. Now, recently I received a mailing from an insurance company that's in my district. It's a great company. And I just want to read this into the record because if you have certain pre-existing conditions, uh, all the marketing in the world won't allow you to purchase their product because they don't insure people with pre-existing -exist conditions. Quote, important information about pre-existing conditions. Although we make every effort to extend coverage to all applicants, not everyone will qualify. If you had treatment for any of the following conditions, you may not qualify for the coverage being offered. And it reads, HIV, AIDS, alcohol, drug dependence, cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, connective tissue disease, Crohn's, diabetes, emphysema, heart attack, stroke, hepatitis, inpatient, emotional and mental health care, organ or tissue transplant, ulcerative colitis. And it goes on to conclude, you should all be aware that we may not be able to provide coverage to individuals who are severely obese, severely underweight, or who are undergoing or awaiting results of diagnostic tests. We cannot offer coverage to expectant parents or children less than two months old. And finally, it reads, this list is not all-inclusive. Other conditions may apply. I don't think it was a doctor that wrote this policy. I think it was someone who had their economic interests in mind and not the care of the people that were looking for coverage that they need to guarantee that they get the care that they're going to require. We are prepared in this Congress, I believe on both sides of the aisle, to step up, to face and confront this essential economic fiscal problem. It's not just about your money, it's about your life. And this, after all, is the House of Representatives, where some people back home in Wisconsin think that we're trying to talk them out of their money and out of their life. Tonight, we're going to have a conversation with one another and with the American people about what's important most to you, and that is your health care. And I'm hoping that someday soon, we're going to come to a time when we'll have all prices openly disclosed everywhere in these United States for all the products. Now, Mr. Murphy, last week when I was home, I had a Congress on your corner at a grocery store in Wapaka, Wisconsin. And while there, I didn't get a headache, but if I had a headache and wanted to buy some aspirin, I took a picture of this. Now, some of my staff here in Washington thinks this is pretty cheap. You know, you can get bear, cherry, or orange-flavored aspirin, $2.55. And right there in the middle, you can buy a generic brand for $2.05. 20% less. What do you want to pay? More or less? It's the same medication. This price is openly disclosed. I think we have to have this type of health care available, not just at the grocery store for aspirin products, 
but at the hospital and at the doctor and everywhere in health care across the country, most particularly for health insurance policies. If we're going to come at the end of the day and continue to allow companies like the policy I just, the offering I read to you, if they're going to be in the marketplace, I believe very strongly they should be compelled to sell the same product to any willing customer with no discrimination due to pre-existing medical conditions. If, after all, we have federal standards in this country for almost everything, why don't we have a standard comprehensive health insurance coverage plan that each and every insurance company must offer to any citizen or legal resident anywhere in these United States? Now, there's nothing wrong with having standards so long as we can meet those standards. So I think these are some of the issues that are important. Transparency in health care purchases. We have to have no discrimination anywhere in health care. Uh, I think the President has accepted this as one of his most essential elements, one of his eight principles for health care. We should not suffer in this country due to discrimination based on the color of your skin. Well, what about the chemistry of your skin? If we're not allowed to discriminate against anyone because of what they're thinking, what about how they're thinking? What about the chemistry of their mind? So I think it's time that we apply our civil rights that guarantee no discrimination to health care. And when we do, we'll begin to guarantee access to affordable care for every single citizen and legal resident. And I yield back. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kagan, uh, Dr. Kagan, who's been uh, such a, a, a great voice on this and I think highlights a growing issue um, that, that I think we can get bipartisan agreement on, that, that transparency of price, whether it be insurance products or physicians, is going to be so important, empowering consumers to make uh, these decisions can be part and parcel of what gets those costs down. Uh, with that, I'm very happy.